Okay, I always say I'm going to try and keep it brief, and then I wind up going for 15 minutes. <laughs> uh, so what's different? Do you see what's different? Can you tell what's different? I'm a Republican. I signed the card. <laughs> I signed the card. Uh, so I could go vote for Ron Paul. And I have a picture to prove that I did not write in Bender or Dr. Doofenshmirtz. I actually checked the box for Ron Paul. <laughs> and um, now I'm going to go stand in the garage, and I'm going to be a, a car. <laughs> Anyhow... I did not see Hanky Panky. I have nothing to complain about with the caucus that happened up there at uh, on Upcountry Maui in the uh, Tavares Center. Everything was straight up. Lots of people showed up. It was orderly. Um, I did not see anywhere near. There was no such thing as 50% of that crowd was a Romney crowd. No way. No way. Um, I saw Ron Paul supporters and Santorum supporters is what I saw with my own eyes. Maybe, a, like, seriously, two or three Gingrich supporters and other than that, I saw no open uh, Romney supporters whatsoever. I did see openly gay men, men that were, right, because gay guys, they can be, uh, you know, you, you can't tell by looking. If they don't want you to know, you would never know. But they made it absolutely clear. They did, you know what I mean? They took, it's hard to describe, but they just made it absolutely clear that they were gay and they were voting for Ron Paul. One couple there voting for uh, Ron Paul, also a lesbian couple. Uh, Harley Davidson got every walk of life. I mean, literally every walk of life. The human zoo showed up there for Ron Paul. And I mean, I was holding a sign, so I had a good indication. And I'm going to say that it was at least half Ron Paul. I, I was thinking it was going to be overwhelming. Like, I was hoping that it would be like, you know, 70, 80, 90% for Ron Paul. But it wasn't. I'd say about 50% was for Ron Paul. And just from the honks and the people. And I mean, from wealthy to poor. From, I mean, any color in the rainbow, you get that in Hawaii anyway, but I mean, the whole, every every nationality you can think of, um, every class you can think of, every, I mean, all, everybody. I mean, just every kind of uh, uh, human came out for Ron Paul. It was a motley crew. Um, there were poll watchers in there, and there were people that I recognized from the Ron Paul camp working inside the caucus. I mean, working in there, you know, handing out voting cards and handing out, uh, or I mean, handing out the ballots and checking people in and so forth. And then a couple of the poll watchers were on. I thought I was going to be a poll watcher, but I wasn't. So anyway, I wound up outside waving a sign. But the, it was straight up. And the people inside there, there were a lot of Ron Paul people that were involved in uh, overseeing the counting of the ballots. So I am not concerned whatsoever that they didn't take a good, I mean, an accurate vote count. Now, what happens every time between calling it in and what the GOP actually writes down may or may not be two different things. I do not have uh, uh, confirmation yet, it's coming, believe me, um, that the numbers match, you know what I mean, from the polling place to the GOP and what they counted. But if you look at the link down there about, uh, you know, by county and by di district, the first thing that should strike you is that how few people actually showed up in the Republican caucus. I mean, it was just a few thousand people in the whole state that showed up. And on the neighbor islands, Ron Paul was strong. Big Island, he was strong. Maui, he was strong. Right? Really strong. Oahu, all of a sudden, it's Romney. Okay. Is there a huge Mormon population over there? Yes. Is it big enough that it would be 45% of the vote? I don't know. I can, I don't know. I don't believe that it would be that strong. And the story, the story that they told about, uh, how, it, you know, the votes came in from the North Shore and so forth. Yeah, the Mormon church is in Laie, and, the, you know, the second temple is in Laie, and we are we have the uh, second largest per capita Mormon population of any state in the Union. The only place where there's more Mormons is Utah. Um, and there's only, you know, and there's no place per capita other than Utah, than uh, Hawaii for Mormons. So did the word come down from on high to go vote for Romney? I'm sure it did. Was it enough to be, okay, could they have pushed pushed the numbers? It could be. But, I mean, most, again, most people I know that are Mormon are Democrats. So they would have to go in like I did and and uh, <laughs> sign the, the card that says they're Republicans. Um, but the, you know, two things. One is the people that were there for the other guys were against Obama. They weren't so much there for the other guys as against Obama, that playing that paradigm again. They were left-right, Republican-Democrat paradigm. The Ron Paul guys were for Ron Paul. The Ron Paul guys are, I mean, because I had a couple of conversations where the guys were saying that, yeah, if Ron Paul got in, I'd vote for him. I'm here for Santorum, but I'd vote for, I'd vote for Ron Paul if he got in. Anybody but Obama. Okay. 
Um, so understand that. The, there's a huge difference because there's no Ron Paul guys going, well, you know, if Santorum gets in, I'd vote for him. I don't know any people that would that were Ron Paul guys that would vote for Santorum. None of the people that I talked to that were there. Um, it was, I mean, it was cool. The very last people that showed up, I mean, literally at the last minute, a guy I knew from second grade uh, got in there and uh, voted for Ron Paul. And because he, you know, it, it's it's just amazing that uh, how small Maui is first off and second off that uh, every, I'm serious, every walk of life was there for Ron Paul. Um, and like I said, at least half, at least half of the people in at that polling place. But I can't speak for the other polling places. I talked to a few people, uh, one of my other friends that was down in Kahului, and his experience was the same. It was orderly. There was no problems. Uh, everything looked up and up. They had a Ron Paul guy down there. He was voting for Ron Paul. He's an old school. His family's been Republican forever. Um, and they, uh, you know, again, all the play, everything I heard from everybody I know uh, here, everything was up and up and fine. Um, so I have nothing to complain about. I have no, right, and, but I don't know that I got my butt kicked fair and square here. Uh, because I don't know what happened on Oahu, and the numbers just, I mean, we're, I was watching the numbers as they were coming in, and then all of a sudden it jumps up to 45% for Romney. Because, like, I guess a precinct or two, what they're trying to say is the story is that uh, a couple of precincts that were heavy Mormon came in and voted for Romney, and that's what kicked it over. Uh, could be true. Don't know. Uh, take a look at some of the other links I have, though. I mean, oh, my goodness. Uh, people down there in other states where they, you know, they mark the ballot for Ron Paul, put it in the voting machine, and it won't count it. Huh. Um... But don't worry, your vote's secure. And then saying, oh, you can't be recording inside the booth by himself. It's illegal to record. Hmm. Why would that be? The same reason why cops don't want to be recorded, I think. Um, anyhow, so I'll put some link. you know, as usual, there'll be a, a ton of links down there. Take a look at them. But uh, all I can say is uh, this thing is not over. And uh, many people there... We're talking about, you know, they're taking over the GOP. One of the, one of, a friend of mine uh, is going to be the vice chairman of the GOP Republican Party. Uh, I mean, like the, I mean, the, the GOP vice chair is a Ron Paul guy on Maui, just so you know. Um, and on, I mean, on and on. They take, just look at all the different states where they're, it's, we're taking over the Republican Party. When I say we, I'm talking about the Ron Paul supporters are taking over the Republican Party and are going to rebuild this thing from the ground up. Um, and there's nothing they can do about it because there's too many people that are moving in that are Ron Paul supporters and taking over the spots from the old guard. And the old guard is falling apart. Um, and that's what needs to happen. And we need to have an actual two-party system. Right now we have a one-party system. There are Republicans and Democrats, and you have what flavor of war do you want, what flavor of Federal Reserve do you want, what flavor, you know, what fa flavor of mortgage fraud do you want. We need to have two parties. And actually, it would be good if we had three or four parties. Um, anyhow, and if he does run as an independent, he is well positioned. But before that happens, he needs to stay into the end. Get it through your heads. He needs to stay into the end because he's changing the discourse. They wouldn't be talking about the Federal Reserve if it wasn't for Ron Paul. They wouldn't be talking about, you know, alternatives to war and, you know, whether Afghanistan is a good idea if it wasn't for Ron Paul. They wouldn't be talking about drug war if it wasn't for Ron Paul. They wouldn't be talking about all these other things if it wasn't for Ron Paul. What they try to do is make the issue birth control, right? And Ron Paul he barely spends any time on it. And I actually did get an argument with a Ron Paul supporter over birth control, where he's like, oh, Ron Paul's not for birth Ron Paul was a gynecologist. Let me say it again. And he understands, because he's a common-sense guy, not some kind of religious whack-job freak, that, you know, no birth control, no any of that, right? How is he delivering babies without, you know, I mean, he's absolutely pro-life, and he understands that you don't need to worry about an abortion if you don't get pregnant in the first damn place, right? That's just common sense. And Ron Paul is about common sense. So when it comes to, you know, birth control, he was all about birth control. Not the morning after pill and not uh, abortion, but birth control so that you don't conceive in the first place. It was an important part of his practice. He says it over and over again. He doesn't have a problem with birth control. He does have a problem with mandates. He does have a problem with making it where it's part of an insurance program or some federal program where people put in money and then they wind up having to subsidize people that get birth control. You know, like if you're a 65-year-old uh, woman, you don't really, you're not too worried about birth control because you can't get pregnant. So why do you have to pay for somebody else's birth control? Um, 
and I heard this from an older woman, that, but, you know, he's never been saying that you couldn't get birth control or that, you know, he was against birth control or that you shouldn't be able to buy, buy condoms or you shouldn't be able to get, you know, whatever, the IUDs or uh, diaphragms or the pill or whatever it is, uh, your birth control of choice, just pay for it yourself. What's the problem? I mean, seriously, what's the problem? Okay. Um, and then, like I said, those gay guys understanding that it was uh, absolutely a personal liberty. Ron Paul is all about personal liberty. And that they don't get extra rights because they're gay. You don't get extra rights because you're black. You don't get extra rights for anything. You get individual rights, right? Inalienable rights. I don't want civil rights. I want my inalienable rights. Thank you very much. And Ron Paul is all about that, the Constitution. And I heard this over and over again from many people. That whether they were for Ron Paul or not, that we need to get back to the Constitution. Now, how they think that Santorum is going to take them back to the, San, the Constitution is beyond me, but the, at least, you know, the dialogue is, again, it's about the Constitution and restoring the Republic, and these are the themes that Ron Paul has been pushing, and he will continue to push them, and he will continue to make this part of the Republican platform when he gets to the convention with a crap load more delegates than people are expecting him to have. In, uh, and then, oh, that's the other thing. Let me explain very quickly. You don't, uh, you don't hang around to become a delegate in Hawaii. What happens is they ca they count the votes and then they divvy them up in a percentage basis. So Ron Paul got three delegates in Hawaii. Um, this is not like we have hundreds of delegates to choose and give out. We had seventeen delegates. Ron Paul got three. I think. Anyway, you can take a look at what the official numbers were. Um, and what else? I think that pretty much covers it. Like I said, I didn't see any any kind of really you know, any evidence of fraud whatsoever uh, at my polling place. I did not see 50% Romney people, though, for sure, or 45% either. So that's a little strange, because there's a Mormon church right up the road. Um, and there, uh, you know, and a Catholic church. And a lot of the, I mean, a lot of the, the churches definitely drove their people to the polls. Make no mistake. I'll give them credit. They got their people out. Um... But it wasn't forty five percent for Romney where I was at. I'm like I can't I can't speak for the rest of the state, obviously. Okay, so the idea though for everyone else is get out there, bring your cameras. Maybe you should do a little exit polling. Maybe you know at least hold up some kind of sign or something so that you can get a feel for how many people are there for Ron Paul. Um, because like say at your precinct, you know you, everybody's for Ron Paul. Like like I said at this one, I was expecting there would be more, but I'd say it was about half. Um, for Ron Paul, that is. But I know other places where I've talked to people or we've traded emails or we have actually talked on the phone where people are saying it wasn't half. It was everybody they knew. Everybody there was a Ron Paul supporter, and yet he still came in third. Um, but that's not the case at, at my polling place. Like I said, it was about half. I'd say it was about half. And if you look at the uh, link there, it's that's what it shows. Um, or I guess it's 30, 30, and, and 30. But it wasn't. It doesn't seem fishy because it it on in the outer islands it looks like what we were expecting on Oahu. That's where it looks a little strange because really forty five percent of people on Oahu, really. But then again, the numbers are so small. So again, they're able to cause confusion, <laughs> and you can't prove it. Very difficult to prove. But there are other places where, like I said, Ron Paul is pulling out the numbers, and even if only a quarter of the people showed up, it's still more than the other guys. So. Whatever. Keep going is the bottom line. Get out there, bring your camera, authenticate and verify. The thing's not over. In Hawaii, we're still going to be handing out cards. We're still going to be trying to get people to understand about Ron Paul and the freedom movement and the liberty movement and the you know the concept of the Constitution. Just because our caucus is over, the, it's, the show's not over. And coming up in uh, November, who win or lose, there's a ton of stuff to do still. And this is a good thing. I talked to many of the Ron Paul people that they're in it for the long haul now, right? They're now politically motivated, they're active, that they're not just going to show up every two years. Uh, same needs to be with you, right? Maybe you take a break after this thing, but then you get back out there and, you know, work. There's so much work to be done. There's so many things you can do. Um, figure out what you can do and do it. And you don't have to do everything. You don't have to be part of everything. Just do your little thing, the small drops, right? Don't let the stuff that you can't do stop you from doing the stuff that you can do. All right, it was interesting, and it was, it, it, anyway, it was very, it was a fun, a fun time. Um, 
I'll talk to you later. They'll, there's plenty of more. And like I just, that, this is my report on what happened on Maui, and it's boring. I'm sorry because it was boring, but uh, there'll be plenty more coming up. Stay tuned. Thanks for your support. Crew Don Ramones, how's the math? Uh, nuclear hubris, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.